Welcome filmmakers, fans, and friends to the all-new Indie Cinema Showcase. I'm Matt Doolittle. And I'm Allison Walter. Together, we're going to bring you the best and brightest in local independent cinema. Each episode will highlight different aspects of independent filmmaking, be that an actual genre, the role of certain key crew members, or various outlets and resources for filmmakers to utilize in their productions. We will then discuss the ins and outs with our industry guests, both in front and behind the camera, travel up and down Central Florida visiting film sets and festivals, while also spotlighting some Florida-made films that we feel deserve the attention. On today's show, we welcome actor Michael Santi, who's been in such award-winning films as Doomsday County and Subprime, to get his take on choosing the right role. We'll also be taking a look at first-time director and actor Dennis Cicino, who channels the great Sylvester Stallone for his trailer called MMA. Then later on in the show, we'll visit the Love Your Shorts Film Festival. All right, guys, let's get things started with our Show Us Your Shorts film about a girl named Taylor who has a unique ability to see the world in ways that many people take for granted. The film is entitled See, and it comes from photographer turned director Dale Metz. Mom and I moved to Florida earlier this year. We moved from my grandparents' farm out west, hoping to find a more independent life on the coast. I'd been to the ocean once before, and knew that's where I wanted to live. The beach is full of life. So pervasive, with sounds and smells and sensations. It's my escape. My fantasy. Just out today. I wish I could take the afternoon off and join you. I wish you could too, Mom. But I like to hang by myself too. It's what other kids do. I'm glad that you're old enough to do this now too. I, I know it's what you've always wanted. I still worry about you though. My name's Taylor. I'm blind. I had bacterial meningitis when I was a baby. The illness damaged my optic nerve and left me without sight. The same disease may have caused Helen Keller to go deaf and blind when she was just 18 months old. Some people think she was born that way, but Helen got sick when she was young, like me. I need to go to the ladies' room. You need to go? I'm good. Taylor, are you sure? I'm gonna be gone for over an hour and you can't leave your chair. I'm all right. You stay put and I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Right. I sometimes wonder why this happened. More often, now as I get older. I don't feel sorry for myself, but think about how unfair it is that I can't do things other girls my age are doing. I have to depend on my mom for so much. And I think about the things I'll never be able to do. Still, I do feel lucky. My ability enables me to see the world in a way so few people can experience. I feel things, hear, and smell in ways that other people take for granted. And I have such an imagination. I think about how things were different for Helen Keller as she was growing up. I love to read. I read Braille books, but I've listened to almost every audiobook available in our library. Something that Helen can never do at my age. I get lost in those books. In the worlds of the characters, the words of the authors. I love to write, too. I want to write books. To be published one day. I want to create escapes like others have given me, like a gift. All right, let's get you to the beach. I think I found the perfect spot for you right over here. 
You feel the chair? All right. I'm putting your beach bag right next to it. It's touching it, okay? This is really nice for you to do on your afternoon break. Anything for you, Taylor. Okay, so you know the rules, right? No leaving the chair. I'll be back in about 90 minutes and then we'll go home and cook some dinner. Thanks, Mom. I'll be okay. Love you. I love you too. You have fun, okay? The heat from the sun consumes me. It makes me feel safe. It's hard to imagine something so bright, so powerful, so perpetual. The air is thick here. I can smell the salt. There's so much life. And it seems that birds are always present. Sometimes, I pretend I can understand them. I know when they're calm, when they're excited, when something threatens, it makes me feel connected. I hear couples talk when they walk by. I think about boys, but who will want me? I can imagine how scary it would be to fall in love with me. Couples need each other for so many things, things I'll never be able to do. I can love though, and I can see the world in so many ways that he would never know. People tell me that I'm pretty. <laughs> I hope some great guy will think so. Isn't that every girl's dream? Look, that girl's back again. Yeah, her mom brings her down to the beach and she just sits in that chair. She was here last week and she never moved. So what's with her? I don't know, but she's weird. <laughs> the wind teases me like a little sister, tickling my arms. It plays with my hair. The touch is real. It's part of my world, my existence. I wonder if sighted people feel these things as I do. I imagine if I could see these sensations so real to me, would be afterthoughts, or lost altogether, in a world full of light and images. The waves are so close, calling me. My sense of hearing guides me in ways a sighted person cannot understand. Still, finding the water will be easy, but finding this chair could become impossible. No landmarks like at my house or other places I go. Nothing but sound all around, in vast openness. I want to feel the water. Let the sand engulf my toes and then my feet, to feel them sink helplessly, as if with time, the sand could swallow my whole existence. Mom would be mad, but she'll never know. I'll count my steps like I've done so many times while navigating my world. I think about where the sky meets the ocean. I'm told they form a line, but I can only imagine two seemingly infinite bodies blending softly together as the air becomes water and the water air. They must go on forever. What does that look like? Forever seems so distant, so impossible.
hey, check it out. She's getting weirder. Yeah, that's not normal. What is she doing? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Hey, princess. What's your name? Um, who are you? People call me RJ. You look like you could use some help. No, I'm okay. Really. Well, I can see that you're not okay. Hey, you can't see, can you? Are you by yourself? No, I'm not. I have friends here, and my mom's on her way. Well, you know, I don't see anybody. How about I take you back to my car, and you can call her. Hey, hey. I'm trying to help you. Look, I'm fine! Really! Thank you, but you can go, please! He said... I think there's something wrong. It just doesn't look right. Yeah, she definitely looks freaked out. Yeah, come on. Hello? Look, she's fine. I'm taking care of her. No! Hey, I was waiting for you. Yeah. Do you know this guy? No. You can tell him we're fine. He can go. Thanks for the help, but we're good. See ya. I can't find my chair. I'm sorry, I know that sounds stupid. Well, it is kind of odd because it's right. Oh, you're blind, aren't you? Yes. Wow, sorry. Can I help you to your chair? Yes. Hey, if you don't mind us hanging with you, we're gonna move over here. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Once again, that was C, directed by Dale Metz. Now, each episode, we like to give our own thoughts from the popcorn gallery and offer feedback about the films we showcase. To help us with this, we've invited some industry guests who have worked in the field from fellow actors, producers, to directors. Our very own Christina Carmona is in the ICS viewing room. So let's check in with her and see what our guests thought about C. Christina? Thanks, Allison. I'm here at the beautiful Enzion Theater in Maitland. Sitting with me, I have Omar Mendez, Jeremiah Bombeck, and I have Chris Green. So we've just watched C. What do you guys think? Oh, well, I, I really liked it. I, I love the visuals of it. You know, showing this girl who is uh, blind and getting like the close-ups of all like nature and like her, her goosebumps and all that kind of stuff. Her feelings, you know, like we take for granted. You know, like we, we, I take, I know when we go to the beach, we just look at the sand and the ocean. It's like, oh, there it is, you know. But for her, it was a challenge and her to kind of feel it and be like, what, like a teenager again, yeah. you know. So I really liked so. how they used that you know, into the film. Very cool. What about you, Chris? Um, I, I agree with Omar. The visuals were, were, were good. Um, I think the audio complemented that well in a lot of the scenes because she is blind, so obviously their sense of hearing is, is heightened, and I like how he complemented that. There were a few scenes where I felt like the score kind of overtook that, and I would have liked to have seen that maybe pull back a little bit so we could get more of the, uh, the audio to match the visual, but um, other than that, I, I thought they did a good job marrying the two. The audio uh, made a big difference. Uh, it was very clean. It was obviously at the beach on a very windy day. I'm not sure if they had done ADR on the film or not. I looked at the credits to see who had done the sound and no one was listed. Um, 
but typically in independent films or student films or amateur films, audio is typically the weakest link. And in this film, uh, it, it wasn't. It made a big difference. And I think that's uh, because the girl was blind. There was a lot of great visuals that we saw, but uh, the sound was very clean. It wasn't distracting from the story. All right. So thank you guys again for being on the panel. And that's all we have today. So from the Enzion, back to you. Thanks, guys. To learn more about Dale Metz, visit his website at dalemetz.com. When we come back from the break, we'll be talking with actor Michael Santi and checking out Dennis Giacino's newest trailer. So, stick around. Welcome back to ICS. Our next guest has been in such films as Doomsday County, Subprime, Legends 2, and the up-and-coming film Concrete Jungle, which stars William Forsythe. From film to film, he has shown his ability to fit into his roles nicely, and for this episode's Industry Insight segment, we're very happy to have with us local actor Michael Santi. Thanks for being here, Michael. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. So what got you into acting? Like, there's a whole crazy world of acting. What, what drew you into it? Uh, you know, growing up, uh, you know, we, uh, every family has issues and problems. I think the trip to the movies was always our ex escape from all that stuff. So, uh, What was your first rated R film? Oh, uh, I think... Come on, everybody knows it. I think it was, uh, it was with, with um, Chuck Norris, uh, Good Guys Wear Black, I think it was, okay. one of those things. Yeah. And <laughs> so Chuck Norris was like my first uh, introduction to the, the tough guys. So things like that, you know, you go to the movies, you just get taken away, you see the damsel in distress, the hero comes in. and You wanted like, to be the hero. I wanted to be that guy, yeah. <laughs> It was, it was an amazing uh, journey that they took us on, so I wanted to be that guy who had that secret power to do that to the audience. That's awesome. So tell us about Concrete Jungle. Do you play a hero in that? What's your role like? Um, kind of sort of, I don't think I'm a hero. I, you know, it's, it's loosely based off of uh, Precinct in New York, which is known for having the Buddy Boys. The Buddy Boys uh, was the most corrupted police department in history. So it's loosely based off of that premise. And my character is, is uh, Cronin, which is not... The, a hero, but more of a, 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 a you know, the typical uh, bad undercover kind of anti-hero sort of anti-hero yeah. guy. Yeah. So, and but there's a group of us. You know, uh, Andrew Roth. Um, you know, uh, Kevin Gage from uh, from Blow and films as Heat That's with cool. Johnny Depp. So, so oh, wow. some phenomenal tough guys. Some phenomenal actors are going to be part of that. So. Is, a, is a tough guy role fun for you, or is, do, do you want to play a sensitive guy? Do you want to, you know, what, what do you what do you have fun, more fun doing? I, you know, acting. You know, for me, it's it's just a matter of being able to show diversity, and then I think that's the key to being in any actor. But when you get approached by certain roles, I, you know, it's not bad to be known for certain things. And and nine times out of ten, it's usually the guy getting beat up or beating up someone. <laughs> or, yeah. But it's fun, regardless of what it is. Good guy, bad guy. Well, if you play the bad guy a lot, is there a kind of role that you'd love to play that you haven't had a chance to yet? Wow, um, there are so many things. You know, I've always said I wanted to play a superhero, believe mm -hmm. it or not. That's like my <laughs> kid dream. Yeah. Um, I can Batman. see that Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, Green Lantern. I don't know if they have a guy my height, though, and yeah. is uh, as one of the superheroes. But I don't think there's a certain role I think I want to play. I just, as long as I can have diversity in film and my career stays, you know, on a, on a nice uh, level playing field. I don't think there's a certain role, but as long as I keep getting work, I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to. Well, you say the work is, is it, Easier. I mean, I, I know you've you've done the LA thing a little bit here and there. Is is it is it good work in Orlando? Is it better to go to LA? What, what would you recommend for someone who's who's trying to be an actor in Orlando? Is, should they take off? Well, I the key I think when you there's certain f levels in acting. I think when you first start out, you take everything. You just mm -hmm. want to get that you know exposure. You want to get that uh, experience. But I think as you get into it a little bit further and you kind of set your uh, your reputation a little bit. I think you have to kind of qualify the people you work with, and I think that's the key. Because you can qualify the uh, production as much as they qualify you in the audition process. And mm -hmm. I think that's the key because it's up to them to really get you out there. And I think if the uh, producer and the director and the PR team that, that you know, establish what the, the film is and they get it out there to the right people, then you can work L.A. and New York. And that's what happened for me. Is I got with the right people, and it didn't matter where you were at as long as you establish yourself as a... Uh, an actor who can, you know, bring something to a role, yeah. then you can go to L.A. and, you know, if they promote it in L.A. right, they'll, they'll call for you. What do you think Orlando being a smaller market than L.A. is, is good in a sense that in Orlando you get to know who you want to work with, sure. you all kind of run in the same networks, whereas opposed yeah, to like in L.A. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a lot of 
you know, these people are here right. this week, they're gone. So right. do you think that's a good, it's a good plus for Orlando? It's, it's, it's a double-edged sword because you're working in Orlando, you know, nine times out of ten times, you, you kind of come across the same people. Um, you can be a big fish in a small pond, which is a good thing. But it's bad only, only because it's, it's, you know, it's a smaller pond. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have to make those steps and you have to qualify the people you're working with because eventually you do have to uh, broaden your horizons to get out nice. there. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, and good you. luck with Concrete Jungle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Concrete I'm sure Jungle. I'm sure that's going to be killer for you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now, if you want to keep in touch with Michael Santee, visit his Facebook page at facebook.com slash Actor. As Mike heads off to star in his next award-winning film, we'll be taking a break. So don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we'll be checking out the latest trailer from Dennis Cicino, and also travel to the Love Your Shorts Film Festival in Sanford, Florida, to see what's hot in filmmaking today. So stay tuned. If you would like to be a guest, have something to promote, or have your film featured on our show, please visit our website, IndieCinemaShowcase.com, and download the release form, or email us at ICSTV at Yahoo.com. Welcome back to Indie Cinema Showcase. In 1976, an unknown actor named Sylvester Stallone wrote and acted in a little film called Rocky. It went on to win Best Picture, and Sylvester Stallone went on to be a powerhouse in Hollywood. In 2012, actor Dennis Giacino hopes that lightning will strike twice. For this episode's feature feature, we present his trailer entitled MMA, in which he wrote, acted, and directed it. Let's check it out. I'm ready to fight whoever. Just put him in front of me, and I'll knock him out. You betrayed me, Jack. And everyone else who believed in you by taking that last fight. But guess what? You took the last fight, and look where it took you. Listen, man, thanks for the offer, but I'm uh, not really interested, you know? You need to think about this. If you think your life was lonely then, let me know how lonely it is now. No matter how hard times get, you must remain in good faith, because God has a purpose for everyone. You can take the man out of the war. Tiff, I was set up. Security! Security! Ah! But you can't take the war out of the man. You're not behind four walls a day. You learn to reflect on yourself and what makes you, you. You start to question your purpose, decisions you've made. One way or the other, you will take the offer. Now it's time for our final segment we call On Location with ICS. In this episode, we visit the Love Your Shorts Film Festival at the beautiful Wayne Dench Performing Arts Center in Sanford, Florida. Founded in 2010, the Love Your Shorts Film Festival places emphasis on the art of short films. Media director Christina Grace Beverly says, the Love Your Shorts Festival is open to novice and veteran filmmakers in all categories. We focus on short films, 30 minutes or less. Um, we have everything from animation to sci-fi horror, drama, comedy. We also have a Florida flavor block, which is specifically for filmmakers from Florida. So we get a lot of locals for that, um, some FSU, UCF, full sale students um, in that category. 
Uh, this year we just introduced our E for Everyone family friendly block of films, which was on Saturday, and we had a great turnout for that. Quite a few of the films um, in our festival this year were actually filmed in Sanford. It's a great movie set. We have all sorts of things, you know, you could do film noir here, horror, um, small town feel. So we just hope to really keep these filmmakers here. Florida has a lot to offer, and because I mentioned earlier, Florida has a small film community. So um, a lot of times when you're in California and New York, it's so inundated. We want to get into like the business that it's sometimes hard to get your foot in the door. But here in Florida, there's a lot of opportunities, and there's a lot of uh, different areas of film, not maybe not just feature film, but just a lot of different small areas for short films and, and other types of work. You know, to, to be a successful actor, you don't have to move to LA like 20 million other people just like you. You don't have to do that. Um, it, you know, it depends on how you measure success in terms of, of you know, really what you want out of, out of it as a career. I've lived in Florida for five years and I've done a substantial amount of film work. Over the course of three days, participants and audience members will be able to see numerous short films and attend discussion sessions with filmmakers and professionals. Audiences will vote on their favorite short film in each category, while a panel of judges crown the best of the fest. Chairman Gene Krockmeyer sums up this year's festival. I will say that since last year we've probably doubled in our attendance. Sanford has really taken a liking to our festival and we couldn't be prouder. Uh, one of our goals when we started this was to create more opportunities for Florida and local filmmakers. And this year we had several UCF film, well, two, two student films from UCF, and some others from Seminole County and Sanford and Orange County, Orlando. So it's, it's taken off this year, and we hope even next year we're going we're to have more. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of ICS. We want to thank Michael Santee for dropping by and hanging out with us, as well as filmmakers Dale Metz and Dennis Jacino. We hope you learned something new, saw something that you loved, or got inspired to get off your couch and go make a movie of your own. Who knows? It might be good enough for us to screen on the next Indie Cinema Showcase. Until then, the set is closed, and as they say in the movie business, that's a wrap. <laughs>